Lars and the David brothers make a reconnaissance trip to see if the old tattooist named Mong is up for a visit. <laughs> Mong's been bedridden for five days, yet he's risen specially to greet his visitors. <laughs> Lars has seen many subjects of his research die before they passed on their knowledge. So, wisely, he takes the attitude that there's no tomorrow. He appears to bask in the eerie limelight cast by one Stark Baldwin Simon's home movie camera and by Lars Krutek's professional curiosity. The person who gave tattoo a long time ago, was that the real expert tattoo artist? Was that a hereditary position or could anybody do it? Oh. Communal thing, man. Everybody is involved. Anybody can do it. Mong hasn't practiced his tattoo art for decades, but he seems eager to talk about it and relive the days when his tattoos acted as charmed amulets. Like Akibusai, Mong was an Iban ranger and on the receiving end of Japanese machine gun fire. Lars has heard that tattoos also play a role in the afterlife. Mong begins to speak of Mandai, the river that runs through Sebiong, the land of the dead. Departed souls must venture up this treacherous river, hoping to reach the longhouses of their most heroic ancestors. But legend has it that this is a journey only the most heavily tattooed Iban can complete. If that's true, Mong must be making good time through Sebion, because incredibly, that night, the old man dies in his sleep. The next day, Tom and I head for Mong's longhouse to join with Lars and the David brothers in paying our respects. Mong's death hits home hard. If I had doubts about submitting to the tattoo needles tomorrow, they're gone now. I'll suffer it proudly and in honor of Mong and all this wonderful tattoo tradition that is vanishing right in front of our eyes. So, Two tattoos hand tapped tomorrow. Like this could be like five or six hours. Oh, it's gonna take the whole day. The whole day. I bet. You know. Are you gonna uh, use two? I may sound or calm, or but truthfully, I'm a little anxious about those needles. After all, we're in a climate where a harmless scratch can quickly turn into a festering wound. Yeah, I, I trust. I trust Eddie and Simon. Yeah. So I gather you're making the yeah. sticks first, are you? Yeah. As a master craftsman himself, Tom is eager to see how the old tools were made. This piece of bamboo will become the needle stick used to hand tap Vince's tattoos later today. I believe he's making a shading machine right now. This would typically have about 14 needles in the end of it. I think for the, uh, the outliners, they use about five, which is pretty close to what we use. 40 years have passed since tattoo implements were last crafted along the banks of the Strong River. 40 years since Gentan last gathered soot on the inside of a pot lid to make the ink. Not that I'm having second thoughts, but I'm beginning to wonder if I have a right to wear Iban tattoos. Then it dawns on me that these tattoos are becoming an integral part of my trip, my Bujalai up the strong.
After only a few minutes, my shoulder is going numb, but not numb enough to dull the pain of the needles. I can tell it's going to be a long, long day. So Vince, so how does this feel? Man? Weird? Different? Very different from a machine. Eddie's mentor, Jen Tan, offers some technical advice during this first round of hand tapping. While Simon attends to the all-important job of stretching the skin, stretching allows the needles to penetrate the skin and makes for much straighter lines. And there's no question that the stretching actually helps quite a bit. It does, man. But once you get into it, the rhythm becomes easy. And after a while, it just you can hear the sound from the from the tool and from the hitting. Uh, you forget about what's what's around you. You're just listening. The, uh, the the tapping, the sounds of the tapping and all that, is very hypnotic. Before long, we've got a sizable audience, and I realize that none of these young people have ever seen someone get a hand tap tattoo before. I hope it's a sign that this neglected Iban tradition is capturing their imagination. The sun's gone down, and Jen Tan finally gets his chance to come out of retirement, the first time he's tattooed in decades. For Tom, this is the holy grail of tattoo research, observing an old master at work. Jantan doesn't appear to have lost his touch at all. It's sure and steady. Did you know that the word tattoo comes from the Tahitian word tatau and was thought to imitate the sound made by the tattooing instruments? The rhythmic tapping of the hand tools really is hypnotic. I'm starting to lose all track of time and even my sense of pain. Okay, hey, Vince. It's over. Eddie, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Dana. Yes. <laughs> Simon. After six and a half hours, I'm exhausted. I've always seen my tattoos as personal rites of passage, and each of my tattoos is a symbol which is deeply personally important to me, but I think none so important as the tattoos I got here today in this longhouse.